Okay, nice. So I'm back with another production session today, and I'm still working at 156 BPM because it's my new favorite genre. And I've just got this nice kind of uplifting, it's more of a summery tune even though we're going into winter uh, in the UK, but it's just got a nice vibe to it. And so I'm just gonna work on this for probably like two or three hours in this session. I'm just gonna roll the cameras again and just see what I can come up with really. But I'll maybe I'll play you through uh, just from start to finish so we can hear where we are. And then I'll go from there. Um, so let's have a little demo of the track um, as of now. delay I'll show you how I made that flute it's really cool so I'm just gonna keep building on this idea like when I have something like this I've kept the arrangement quite simple so far even though I've spread it out a little bit I haven't gone to a full track because I still want to be adding maybe a few more touches um, to this track. But maybe if I show you a few of the kind of things that are going on at the moment, I've got this drum break here, which is, I pre-processed this. It's already been pitched up, it's already been driven in the desk, and I think I've uh, quantized it as well, just so I can get it really tight. And so this is like the main drum break here. Got kick layer, just fattening it up, and then I've got these, which sounds like nothing on its own. It's from another break entirely, which I, I think I tried to use this break and it didn't sound good, so I just used it as these little which sound really cool. Then I've got a hat layer. And when I do my hats, it looks like I'm not doing any velocity here, like you can see I'm doing it there, but it looks like I'm playing them straight, but what I would do instead is come in here and use this volume stepper. And so I'm like, every time the hi-hat triggers, it will go to a different velocity. Um, and I'm doing that on pitch as well. So I've set the pitch range. If I exit this, I bring the pitch range down from 12 and then it comes to one. And then I'm going to slightly pitch it up and down as well. And I'm doing it on cutoff. So I'm just making it so every time the hi-hat hits, it's like really subtly different. This is like a shaker sample, so if you ever want to get your shakers in, I just do this, just slice up all the individual elements of the shaker. I've pitched it up a little bit. I'm doing, um, and then just controlling the decay to make it a bit more snappy. And then this last one is the bongo that I bring in. Now what's cool about this bongo is I'm really layering this sound this sounds going under my kick and then this one is going on my snare because they sound like they would, but this one's more like a kick and this one's more like a snare. So I've just layered that and it gives this a really cool resonance to my snare when they layer up. I've got a decimal, I've got a compressor and a limiter. Huh? 
So in the production stuff, maybe I just like, I've got this pad, which is one of my own pads from, I think I made this um, from layering my samples together. What's cool here is I'm doing, basically doing this, I think, if I find the note I'm playing, I'm just playing a C. And then I've, in, in Renoise, to set up the pitch wheel, you've got to go pitch, and then you basically, um, I think it's this one. Yeah, you have to assign the pitch custom. So you click that and then you assign pitch bend. It doesn't happen automatically, but I've got a two semitone pitch range. And then I can just press C. And I'm basically doing that rather than going like. It's cooler. That sounds dope. And then the last thing I'm doing here is just using a bit of like a chromatic movement where I'm going back down to that C, which sounds really cool to come back to it. Nice and like cheerful, isn't it? Um, kind of like bumbling along. And then the vocal here. This is a vocal synth. I made this. So I've been using this arcade. So I, I kind of got a, an arcade patch on my keyboard. Um, this is the, like a, one of the new ones on Hooked. <laughs> patch here has this lovely sustaining note so I've resampled that note into Renoise I've pitched it up a semitone and then I'm doing some like random pitch modulation with quite a fast frequency and like a low amount so I'm just trying to make it unstable there and then I'm doing um, like a, a tremolo as well with the volume LFO. Anyway, it actually makes this really cool synth, which I really love actually. So I'm being quite creative with that one. And then with the whole rest of this arcade, I, because in arcade, whilst it's a really cool plugin, You've got obviously access to like the tools in here for editing. You can come and like edit these patches or whatever, change the start times. But what I really want is like all the little chunks of it so I can chop it up like I like to do in Renoise. So it's got really, it's perfect for my tune this, but I was like, I want all these chunks. So I've basically recorded like each of these sections into Renoise. Uh, which took me a while, and then I've chopped it all up into this. So if I just play this raw, you make me happy. What you doing? The universe scares me, scares me. Ooh. So you can see I've basically chopped all of them, put them on one instrument and renoise, and then chopped it all up. And so now I've got really fun. So I've got a really cool thing I can like jam out with and chop up and I've been doing that for my vocals. I think I'll do more of that as the track goes on. And that's kind of the most of it. And then an there's another cool patch I've made, which is this. Which is a woodwind, but it's doing, it's just doing pitch modulation again, which is like going from, what's it going from? So just really loving using that pitch modulation. It's like a two semitone difference on a pitch modulation because then you stay in key of your track. You like pitch up to the next key in the scale you're in and then back down. Sounds really cool. Um, and maybe the last thing I've done here is a little bit of my own vocal where I've gone like... It's that wickedest sound. But if I pitch it back down... It's that wickedest sound. Me speaking into a mic and then just pitch it up. But it does sound cool when it comes into this 
like end of the breakdown. It's that wicked sound. So I need more energy at the drop, I think. That's basically where we are now. So let's just start kind of figuring this out and see if I can come up with something today. Does it just want to be that bass though? It's that wicked sound. sounds quite realistic in the way it releases the sound. Ah, so if I go... It's like the release of the sound, isn't it? Here, release. I want something really beautiful, like the voice of an angel in here. The voice of an angel sing to me. When they walk back, they sing through the forest. This is the bit I want in it. 
This one doesn't want a big release. Yes! Oh my god, that took me so long. It took me like half an hour. That like one thing. Let's hope it works in context. Jesus. So nearly right in it, but it's cool. Slice and dice me right up. Yo, can you hear when I? Before it was having, it was catching on the end of like a hit, and it was going. For my snare and is making it sound a bit less snap. When I move all these things around, yeah, like that's clean. Yo. Maybe we'll go to these shuffles instead. Nice. going to be cool to do some jungly stuff here. Probably sounding pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so if you take time to properly prepare your breaks and like I'm doing nudging the offsets to get them to groove right and just really detailing like cutting some of the ends off as well in here. These this COA control is just gating the ends of the hit and it makes them sound a bit tighter and a bit cleaner um, and now oh that sounds really cool like clean 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 and then a, a fade down in the break so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna go inside now um, instrument macros and then LFO here right and then uh new chain i want the tune to just say dead straight so the tune just locks in here and then it hits a point and starts to go down before it kind of resets um and then if i hit one shot reset okay so it wants to work where it wants to happen is like this the shape wants to be like this, um, I think. Okay, it's only gonna let me do that. And then back up in it. And then it's somewhere like this. Yes, listen to that. Drag them all down to like 80%. And then this one goes up here. And then I change the offset. Okay. Yo. What I can do is play with the decay. So 
so cool to have it live. Like it's way better than a transient shaper for um, controlling your break to have it all sliced up and then do it with decay. It's way cleaner. So be. Tasty. I've just done this section here where I'm trying to just lift energy up before I kind of finish the track and I've got this kind of nice horn thing happening. So I go from... Needs a little bit of a transition there maybe. I think we have to build this bit up a bit more. That's quite nice. 